and tell God thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. One, two, three, four, five, thank you. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thank you. Hundred thousand, thank you. One million, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, say it had not a man. For the Lord. in the house. <laughs> I'm jumping. Woo. I told uh, Pastor Barnes, I said, man, I ought to jump off the stage today like you, but I'm going to still wait on that one. <laughs> I don't want to embarrass myself on all y'all today. Whew. My, 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 my. So I want to talk to you today about God sponsors his purpose. God sponsors his purpose. Amen? Your purpose, my purpose, if it's God's purpose, then God's going to take care of the bill. Can I get a witness? If, 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 if you and I are in line with what God called us to do in the earth, he will pay your bills. Amen. 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 I got to go off. I got to snap off. I got to, you know, Minister Charlene, I just can't hold it. I can't hold it. Brother Dwight, I can't hold it. Dwight, Dr. Dwight and Amber, all y'all in here, Minister Cunningham, everybody, Mr. Dion, Sister Dana, everybody. When God calls you to do something, every one of us in the earth have been called into earth. You didn't call yourself. Can I get a witness? How many just woke up and you was in the earth? So God called you to the earth. Since God called you to the earth, God had something for you to do on his behalf. Does that make sense? Since God called you here, then it would only make sense that God had something for you to do. And if you would do what he called you to do, he'll sponsor you. He'll pay your bills if you do what he said. He'll fight your battle. Come on here. He'll heal your body. Whoa, you better watch it. If you get the revelation that you are not here by your own will. Jesus told us at the beginning, he said, Father, he told his disciples, Thy will be done. Singular. God's will, not the 
your will, not my will. But God is telling me to tell everybody in this room, everybody on the internet, if you, if you would just say yes, Lord, to your purpose, God say, I'll take care of everything else. How many work for a Fortune 500 company and they never show you the power bill? They never show you all of the things that it takes for you to work for them. They don't ever come to you about the water bill. They don't ever come to you about the paper and the computers and all the other uh, logistics that helps you. He just gives you an assignment. They say, when you go to your assignment, the machine going to be there. The computer going to be there. Am I right? The desk and the chair are going to be there. Am I right? The internet is going to quit you. Get the revelation on how God has called us into the earth for his glory. And when you decide I'm going to do what he sent me to do. Somebody said that's when the bills get paid. That's when your body gets healed. Okay. I need y'all to shout with me. Y'all going to shout with me? Yeah. Oh, I know you all when I tell you what I'm going to tell you. You're going to go like I did. Snap. Crack and pop and all the other stuff. So your, your pastor, y'all know, was in the hospital uh, for 40 days. Whew. And uh, the Lord woke me up. Come on, shout glory. That's why I'm up here. Yeah, I'm up here because he woke me up. Uh, but after he woke me up, OSF Hospital said, come and see us. <laughs> now that you woke, we got some paper for you. And Minister Christine, they handed me, sent it in the mail, a bill for $180,000. I said, boy, that devil don't play fair. He said, since I can kill you on the ventilator, I'll give you a $180,000 hospital bill. Trying to, the trustees and I, but it's mainly me, it's all me. They do whatever I would ask them for supporting me. But I'm always trying to research to get a cheap insurance plan so the church don't have to pay much. And I knew I was going to turn 65 in January, Mr. Cunningham. I said, I get 65, I ain't going to pay these people nothing else. <laughs> I'm going to get my uh, Medicaid, Medicare, all that good stuff. But I mean, the pastor went in the hospital in October. Okay. <laughs> Medicare didn't kick in to January. Oh. OSF said, here you go. $180,000. Our insurance said, well, we'll pay 60 of that. A lot. Let me see. Uh, that still be crazy money. But being a man of faith, being a woman of faith, we said we're gonna trust God. Woo! I don't know how the bill gonna get paid, but we're gonna trust God. We're gonna bankrupt the church, and we are not filing bankruptcy. Somehow, somewhere, we take less salary. We take forget the bonus, whatever else they do for your pastor, first lady. We are not going to bang up the church. Hallelujah. So the lady, I was talking to her, and she said, well, they won't go for 36 months. I said, huh? 36 months. She said, I need $6,000 a month payment. Whew. Glory to God. So, you know, I always said we weren't going to sell nothing in new life, but Sister Miller was going to get to the edge of mama rag on. She's going to be standing right out there. <laughs> <laughs> and she's going to catch all at the door with Evan Neal. Evan Neal, Evan Neal. We weren't going to do it. We are going to trust God. But they said $6,000 a month. Because I later found out the bill went up to 180000 I guess everything hadn't come in yet. So they said they need $6,000 a month. So that means we would be outdoors. And uh, if I have a car, you ain't got no gas money. <laughs> you got no insurance money. So come on, somebody say, but if he called you to it, he'll sponsor you if he called you. Woo! 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 So I talked to the lady. She said, I tried three times to get your bill reduced. 
The one lady said, well, I might be able to get you four years with making about 4900 a month. That still sounds crazy to me, Sister Brenda Rankin. I still, sound, I still ain't got nothing to eat. <laughs> uh, Sister built a little car, almost paid for it, but mine paid for it, so I could at least go out there and look at it. <laughs> Can't drive me. So the lady called me again, Brother Di, and the lady called, Sister. Delphina, he called, she called, she said, Pastor Miller, I tried three times to get you a reduced bill. She said, but I couldn't. She said, but I took it to my supervisor. Hey! And she said, my supervisor said, well, he qualifies for catastrophic. Come on, somebody. She said, from October the 17th until the day that you left the hospital, Until the day you left the hospital. I left on the 18th. First day of the time, November 18th. Shout glory. Shout hallelujah. We don't have no heaven, but I feel like jamming. I feel like praising him. I feel like shouting. I feel like giving God the praise. I thank you, Lord. for yourself because if you do it what he called you to do he gonna pay your bills he gonna heal your body he gonna bless your family he gonna bless you Lord he gonna bless you coming church anyway. We kept praising God anyway. We knew about this for weeks. But we didn't stop trusting God. Come on here. We didn't go home and lay down and cry. Talk about look at this. And then, no, we just kept God going to make a way. How many you know God gave me favor? Y'all check it out. That lady could have been one of those kind of employees that said, well, I'm sorry, sir. This is what the bill is. She could have been one of those that just said, well, this is it. Here it is. Never took it to the supervisor. She looked three times herself to try to find a way. Somebody said, Pray every day that God give you favor. Pray that God give you favor. Pray that you get the right receptionist. Pray that you get the right person when you call. How many know the supervisor? He didn't have to dig either. Come on, y'all. God don't love your pastor no more than he loves you. Come on here. Don't you ever think that this thing happened to me because I'm special. Tell your neighbor you special too. You one of God's children too. God love you too. And God will pay your bill too. And God will. Somebody shout glory. If you and I will line up with his purpose. He'll sponsor you. This ministry is 34 going on next month, April, 35 years. And he paid our bills for 35 years. Come on, somebody shout glory. We never had a fundraiser. Come on, somebody. How are we going to make God out of a beggar? Talking about God called me to be a pastor. If he really called you, then he'll pay the bills. 
Don't let y'all pastors get mad. I'm just telling you, if he called you to it, he'll pay the bills. We've been in this spot 20 years. We didn't pay over a million dollars on this spot. We've never passed a bill. We never passed a pay. Come on, somebody shout glory! Yeah. How are we gonna make God into a beggar? How can we make God into a beggar? Somebody say, shut your mouth. God don't want you begging. He got you. He ain't coming when you call, but he's gonna always show up. When I got the first bill notice, I was ready for God to pay the bill that day. I said, God, look at this. God didn't say nothing. I know. Let's see if you're going to trust me, son. You don't think I would wake you up off the ventilator to kill you with a hospital bill? You wish you wasn't alive because you can't pay your bills? Come on. And he called all of us. All of us, all we have to do is get in his purpose. Whatever that is, God called you to do, get in his purpose. I like to generalize it because how many of you married, that's your purpose? Some of it. Do what he tells you to do in the marriage and he's going to bless you and he's going to feed you and he's going to close you. Sister Miller and I have been married 46 years and be 47 next month and we ain't never had our lights turned off and we ain't never been able to have shoes and clothes and whatever we needed because in that purpose, God took care of us. Three children, God helped us raise all three of them and make sure they had things. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. You got a job, then that's part of your purpose. Go to your job and don't act like you're calling in lying all the time. Hello? I ain't coming today. God, I ain't paying you today either. Because you're lying. Come on. Glory to God. He called you. He's going to take care of you. Somebody need to hear that today. If he called you, he did call you because you didn't call yourself. So he got something in store for you. Anybody ever read it? Go in the vineyard and work. Whatever's right, God said he will pay it. How can we not trust God after we work for him? You're working for all these other people and you don't know their name. You don't know nothing about their bank account. But when God says, I want you to go and do things specifically for the kingdom of God. Well, I don't know the people in the church be taking advantage of you. That's what you saying it all the time and working on the door and helping with the food. My mama had 14 children. She worked down at the church all the time. We said, Mama, why are you down there? Working at that church. Them people don't care nothing about what you're doing. My mom said, I ain't working for them people. She said, if I work for them people, I would quit a long time ago. She said, but I'm working for the Lord. Hey, come on, shout glory! You a lot of people don't participate in church business and working and helping and supporting their own church because they think somehow they're not going to get paid. How in the world you gonna work for the king and the king not pay you? Gosh, I'm insulted by the attitude of church people who lay back because they think they're not getting the monetary gift for their service. And God said, But I saved your life, didn't I? I took care of your children, didn't I? I gave you breath to breathe, didn't I? I put chicken on your table, didn't I? I gave that car you rolled up in. Didn't I? And you acting like now you already did pay me back. Oh, <sighs> I pastored this church for 10 years without a salary. Not a dime that I received. Why? Because the church couldn't afford a preacher. They needed a preacher. So I said, I'm going to work. And I go to Lyman Gordon and work. When I get through working there, I come back and do Bible study and I teach whatever. Amen. I cut the grass down on Union Street. Amen. Didn't matter. Because you know what? I'm working for the Lord. 
I didn't know when he was going to start paying me, but I knew I had to get in there and work first. Hello, somebody said you got to work first. You don't even work for the uh, companies you work for and they get your check the day you come in. They say, wait, go to work. We'll catch you at the end of the week. Matter of fact, two weeks sometimes. And you didn't every day just work. <laughs> come to the church and I ain't got nothing for the church. Amen. Look at this real quick. Look at, look at Romans 8 and 28. Y'all know it. Yeah. Romans 8 and 28. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I feel like I feel like having church. <laughs> Woo! Me and your brother died. We feel like it. Yeah. And we know 28. That all things work together for good to them that what? Catch that. Mark that. You got to first love God. That's how you'll be found in his purpose. Because you love him. You will serve him. You'll be a good husband. You'll be a good wife. You'll be a good person. Period. Amen. You'll be honest. You'll be faithful. You'll be committed. He said clearly. He said love them to them who are called according to his is that clear? The way that God will sponsor you, you love him and you call according to his purpose. Okay, the world's all messed up because everybody want to do their thing. And they want to catch God on the backside. I've been in prison 30 some years and inmates in prison pray more than they ever prayed when they were free. Why is that? Because when you decide you're not going to do God's will, you're going to do your own thing, click up. Oh yeah, you're going to jail. A lot of them in there, they all preached me on Tuesday nights when I was going in. Because all they've been doing is sitting in their cell studying. When I come in, Pastor Miller, you know what the Bible says, right? All right there, Reverend. <laughs> all right there, Jonah. <laughs> oh, you said you weren't going to Nineveh. Oh, you went. Amen. <clears throat> Get Ephesians 1 and 17. Ephesians. No, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. I'm wrong, not Ephesians. I'm looking at the wrong page here. Hallelujah. Come on, get Philippians 4 and 19. Y'all know these verses. This is just something to build my case, but I didn't already had church. Anybody already had church? Yes. Somebody said 260,000. 260,000. Paid in full. Paid in full. I got the letter to confirm it the other day. I should have brought it with me so some of y'all could see it because I know some of y'all said, I ain't a lie. Ain't nobody ain't paying no $270,000. You know, he's just up there trying to entertain people. <laughs> Follow me and Sister Miller home. I'll show you the letter. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, Philippians. What does it say? My, but what? My. God, but my God, somebody say he's my God, shall supply how much? 260,000, come on somebody, wake you up off the ventilator, I need to be woke up, come on somebody, I need him to watch over and heal my wife while I was on the ventilator, and he did that, come on somebody, I need him to be with Aisha and Heaven and Latoya and Trinity and Israel and Cameron and Victoria, Lord. Christoph, I need him to be with every member of New Life Church of Faith. While I was on the ventilator, God took care of everything. While I was out of commission, God still supplied New Life Church of Faith. God still paid the bills. Come on, somebody. Shout glory. You don't need it. God will still make sure you get it. Because I read the book. He said there ain't no wants to the saints. Not just your needs. He got your wants. Uh -huh. You didn't need another car, some of y'all, but you decided you wanted to buy another one and you wouldn't got it. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. But my God, but my God shall supply all that you need according to his riches and glory 
Somebody say, by Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody say, I got somebody on my case. Hey, his name is Jesus. He forever lived to make intercessions. He knew I had that deal, Sister Dana. He knew it, Minister Craig. Mother Philpott, he knew it. And God touched the supervisor. Come on, somebody. And said, paid in full. Shout glory. glory. You know, in my little mind, I was just looking for a reduction. Just make it livable. <laughs> we ain't got to take no more vacations. Just let us keep our cars and our houses. But Lord said, no, I'm going to do better than that. God bless you, Minister Wilkerson. I'm telling you, God supplies. Somebody say, all you need. Come on, somebody need to shout right in your seat. Just move your feet. You don't have to stand up, but you all at least say, yes, that's for me. God supplies everything I need. If I would just be obedient, if I would just love the Lord, yeah. somebody should just go on in the vineyard and go to work. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> just go on in there and do what I told you to do. Not what you want to do. Tell your neighbor, quit waiting for God to give you a sign what you like. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. That's where the problem is. <laughs> we want God to give us an assignment that we like. He said, no, I'm going to need you to go where ain't nobody got no food. And I want you to help them. I want you to go, Minister Christine, to the women's shelter. Where they've been abused all their life. And every time you walk in there, somebody crying. And having mental meltdowns because they've been abused by their own family members. And, and they had an abusive husband. And, and they couldn't feed their children. And some have sold their bodies. Somebody said, God needs you to feel somebody else's pain. It ain't your pain. But he needs you to feel somebody else's pain. So when you walk out of that pain, you can look at your life and say, Woo! Yeah. But if you just sit in these nice little clean places and you never go where the hurting people go. Where they live at every day. You know, New Life, I always told y'all, give one hour a week. Don't give five or ten hours. Give one hour. Can you commit to one hour to volunteer somewhere and go feel somebody else's pain? You ain't got one hour for as good as God been to you. Oh, y'all quiet now. I got one person on the front clapping. The rest of y'all looking hard through the mask at me like. I'm busy, Pastor. I was busy too. I worked a natural job and I pastored. And I went here, there, and everywhere. Come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor that's the truth. I watched him. I watched him. I didn't go with him, but I watched him. I never volunteered to go with him. I just said, Pastor, where are you going? I'll see you when you get back. Be sitting right here. Jesus. This is only offensive, and it only offends you when you know God talking to you. Has God been good? Yes. Somebody said, if you do what he tells you to do, he'll sponsor you. Never ran out of gas all these years because I was on kingdom business. Come on. Didn't maybe have a lot of gas. I had enough to get to where I needed. Come on, somebody. Whew. Hallelujah. Come on, get Genesis 12. I just want y'all to see this. I'm building my case. Is it all right? And we're talking about God will sponsor you. God will sponsor you. Somebody say, God will sponsor you. Uh -huh. if, if you do what he called you to do God ain't going to help you cheat on your husband no. Y'all quiet now All these cheaters He, he ain't going to help you cheat on your, your, your wife He ain't going to help you with that Me and Sister Miller went out of town A couple of days to come back yesterday afternoon And when we come in on Lynch Road And we seen cars Just piled up uh, Not any record of them, but just, They was all in front of this one place they was all the way around the building. Yes. I said, what is that? Oh, they buying weed. They buying weed. <laughs> Woo! It had to be at least 100, 200 people. I mean, they was in that line to get high. 
See, you don't smoke weed just to smoke. No, you smoking it to get high. That kind of weed. They got some medical weed and stuff, but these folks was in that puff, puff, pass, pass. But how many know if you do what he called you to do, he'll be your weed? I gave up weed 40 years ago. I smoked weed, but I gave it up when I found Jesus because he gets me high without me having to pop, puff, pass, pass. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And you do what he called you to do. You don't have to escape your reality to smoking and drinking. People need their drinks. They be fussing and fighting and cussing till they get their drink. I got why? Because they have no peace. They want to take the edge off. Holy Ghost will take the edge off. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh -huh. You get in purpose, he'll sponsor you. He know how much you can bear. Come on, somebody. He know just what I was going through. He know just what First Lady was going through. And the Lord paid the bill. <clears throat> Shout glory. He don't love me no more than he loves you, so don't get it twisted. Well, you the pastor, man. No, I got a bunch of pastors right now that's broke. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. They all tricks and gimmicks to try to get money uh, to their church and to themselves. Right there, right there, right there. I see it, I see it, I see it. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> oh, the Lord showed me something. They moonwalk before they tell the lie. <laughs> and God said we're going to have a $50 prayer line today. I'm telling you, most pastors don't tie. Nobody listening across this internet should be upset unless you're one of these pastors that don't tie. And that's why you don't preach on tithing because it cuts you too deep to preach on tithing when you know you stealing and robbing God yourself. From the time this church started 34 years ago, first lady and pastor, we've been tithing into New Life Church of Faith. Why? Because we believe it was a good crowd. It was what God had called us to do. And if you don't even support the place that you pastor, shame on you. You won't even honor the own place that you pastor. Most lots, a bunch of them, say God called them to pastor, but they don't tithe. They don't tithe. So they have all these fundraisers. Nobody get mad. I don't care. You ain't my sponsor. Hello. I read the book. He told me go and vineyard work. Is that right? When I left the natural job at Wyman Gordon Cook Girl, I, he said, remember, I'm your sponsor. So 20 years later, he's still paying the bills. Amen. Amen. You got some folks that won't tie into their own local church because they think, I'm going to have another suit on. I am going to have another suit on, whether you give some money or not. <laughs> All these years you ain't gave, and I'm still buying a new suit. The point of it is not that you can ever stop God blessing his servants who are called by his name to do his will. All you do is cut your own self off from your own blessings. God called everybody to bring it into the storehouse where God had prospered you. So if you don't do it, you ain't going to stop God from blessing me. I'm just going to keep doing what he's telling me to do. You ought to get saved enough that you can be a blessing instead of looking for a blessing. I got to quit. We got a little bit of time. So here Abraham, y'all look at 12. This is Abraham. This is the father of faith. Abraham. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Abraham. Thank you, Lord. Abraham, 12 and 1, it says... Now the Lord hath said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from the kindred, and from the father's house, and to a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. 
And I will bless them to what? Bless thee and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Did you see God told Abraham leave everything that he was familiar with? God told Abraham leave your family. Leave your daddy. Get away from all them folks and go where I tell you to go. And how many know God did just what he said. He blessed Abraham. Come on somebody. Everybody in the room. You got to get away from whoever God told you to get away from. And go where he tell you to go. And go do what he tell you to do. And when you make up your mind to do that. Then God said I'm going to bless you. Shout glory. Quit waiting for God to show you the total before he tell you to go. We are in this place. But how many know we were in the living room 34 years ago? We were in baby town. Come on somebody. Baby town used to be a club. But we turned it into a church. Somebody said just go away and tell you to go. <laughs> Look how crazy it is. Just go do what he tell you to do. How many know this is a beautiful room? Isn't this beautiful? Come on let's thank God for the beautiful room we're in. Sister China, somebody on the uh, Daniel Connection said, how many can remember Zayers? And I shouted back. I said, yeah, that's where my church is right now. <laughs> yeah. 34 years ago, this was Zayers. I don't, I don't know who was with me, but somebody came with me, and we came to Zayers and bought the first chairs for the church, some little white metal chairs. I've been the elder hunter, Pastor Hunter. This is where we came and we bought the first 10 white chairs out of this building, never knowing we were going to end up in this place. Come on, somebody. Shout glory. glory. How many remember two years ago this place was underwater? This beautiful room you sitting in was underwater. It was mold everywhere. It was mildew every. Come on, somebody. It was raining in this place like raining outdoors. Somebody said, but if I called you to it, I'll bring you through it. Shout glory. It may look bad some days. It may be hard some days. You may cry some days. Got a bad roof. Oh, got a bad roof. Lord God. But how many know God kept making a way? And the bank gave us another two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to put the roof on. Come on, somebody! Thank God for the uh, contributions of some of the community uh, that gave us some money. Uh, but we had to go and get two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. How many know God opened that door? Uh, and ever since we got that two hundred and fifty, uh, we haven't passed the pan. Uh, but God still been paying that note. Uh, shout glory! I believe. That we won't have a note much longer. I believe in God that God, just like He canceled me and Sister Miller's bill, He's gonna cancel this mortgage, He's gonna cancel everything. I just believe God's gonna say that cancellation for New Life Church of Faith. I believe in God that Heavenly Grocery Store is gonna be booming. Come on, somebody, that God giving us a restaurant. A larger man right in this square. Come on, somebody. I believe in God. I believe in. Come on, somebody. If He called you to it, He'll bring you through it. And He'll do it when you would hold your head up. And He'll prepare a table before your enemies. Come on, somebody. They knew when this place was underwater, they done. They done. Look at it. Ooh, child, that place is a mess. Some of them riding through here now in all these empty buildings. Somebody said resurrection means, I mean, uh, crucifixion brings resurrection. 
Come on, somebody say, it looks like a crucifixion over there now, but somebody say, resurrection is on this way. Come on, somebody say, life is going to be so bright. That's the reason that you're pastor. I want to lit up so bright around here at night that you think it's high noon because we are in light that sits on the hill that cannot be here. I want God to get glory. I want God to be glorified. I want all of our haters, all the criticizing to say, ooh. Night, but you go over there, you need sunglasses because they can pay the power bill. Come on, somebody. And we pay three or four thousand dollars a month for 20 years. Come on, y'all. That's just the power bill. Come on, y'all. I'm going to try to help somebody understand. Quit trying to make God cheap like you. Oh, you cheap. You shop at the the, the Dollar Tree every week. <laughs> you see that Macy's? You go to run Macy's. <laughs> Always looking for a deal. When are you gonna ever get delivered that you're rich already? Woo! You already got more Woo! than enough. Hallelujah! Woo! Shout glory! Somebody said, quit trying to live comfortable instead of going out on the water like he told you to. Get out there where he tell you to go. I'm about done. I must be preaching good my nose keep running. Okay, I didn't hear nobody say amen. No, okay. That's all right. That's all right. Ooh, listen with y'all. St. Matthew's real quick, 20 and 4. Matthew's 20 and 4. Matthew's 20 and 4. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody shout glory. glory. Oh, come on, somebody say, mm -hmm, good. You know, somebody said the Lord. You got to say it just like that. The Lord. That's my friend, Pastor McCullough, coming up. The Lord. Can I get a witness? The Lord. I love that boy. He's crazy like me. Come on. 20 and 4. Matthew 20 and 4. Everybody want to say it. And said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, what? I will give you, and they went their way. Y'all know all of them scriptures, and there was one that buried it. Uh oh. There's somebody here today, you buried with God. Gave you as a talent. Because you're afraid of failing. I don't care, y'all. That's what my whole thought is about this thing, walking with God. If I fail, I don't care. I'm going to try. Woo! I don't care. We're going to have the grocery store. I believe in God. I believe in God for other things. And if anybody says, well, it didn't work, so what? We tried. All these folks that's going to get today, uh, 90 year old time, and sit in their rocking chairs and say, I wish I had it. No, when I get there, I'm going to say, Woo, what a ride. That was crazy. Hey, Amen. Went to Africa, I said, Woo, what a ride. <laughs> God, I was laying on that bed. I woke up, I said, Sister Bella, what happened to me? <sighs> but God. But God. Somebody said, Just go do what He tells you to do. He'll sponsor you. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Can I get another witness? Somebody else get on your feet. It's already after one o'clock. But I was having too much of a good time. Last one real quick while you're standing. Psalms 37. We out of here. Psalms 37. Hallelujah. Psalms 37 and 23. And this is what it says. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighted in his way. Hallelujah. Shout glory. Come on, let's pray. God, help us to trust you when it don't make no sense. 
Lord, help us to be like Father Abraham, and when you give us an assignment, we'll just go. Hey, God, and when we get in storms like I've been in, God, we'll trust you that you sponsor us and you will bring us out. Come on, everybody, so I accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. By faith, I believe Jesus came, born of a virgin, died, rose on the third day with all power in his hands. By faith, I receive him. Spirit of the living God, baptize me. Give me power now so I can walk right. I can talk right. I can do what? The Lord called me to do. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Just stay right there. God, we thank you for the ministry of giving. Bless everyone that will give, that they will give it out of a cheerful heart. They'll trust you, Lord, and they are giving it unto you. God, we thank you for New Life Church of Faith. It is good ground. I pray a hundredfold return to everyone that tithes and give offerings into this ministry. And Lord, let it only bring you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come on, somebody shout glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, shout thank you, Jesus. It's so important that we understand this. If we are going to go to the next level with God, we're going to have to trust God by faith. Amen? So this Wednesday, come on and tune in Central Time at 7 p.m. on the Internet. We're not back in the uh, building for Wednesday night services, but we will uh, invite you to Zoom with us and go on to Facebook. And that's at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central. Amen? Okay, I just, Sister Roberta, I believe we're going to go ahead with sunrise service on the Easter Sunday, first Sunday in April, 6 a.m. sunrise service, and then we'll have our 11, uh, 12 o'clock service uh, for stylers and the profilers, but uh, 6 a.m. if the real saints come out, amen. We're not going to be eating or nothing, but we're going to come out and worship for about an hour, 6 a.m. Easter Sunday, amen? All right, God bless you all, God bless you. Oh, my bad.